Nerd Rage Relegate. Gentlemen, welcome to Nerd Rage Renegades Podcast. Finally, past Horror Fest. Yeah. I'm telling you Finally. what, we, we do that for a whole month, but towards the end, it's kind of like, I love doing it, but at the same time, it's kind of like, let's get back to our regularly scheduled program. Well, this year, instead of uh, driving ourselves crazy with like actual Horror Fest lists and all that bullshit, uh, we, we had a pretty easy going Horror Fest, but then we also tried to squeeze in two commentary tracks in there, too, so we yeah. made it just as hard. So, yeah, if you're listening to this on Wednesday or Thursday, whenever you're listening to this, if you go right now, please go to YouTube, to the Nerd Rage Renegades YouTube channel, uploaded as of the 31st of October to win the year of our Lord, 2017, is the Renegade Riffs of the Legend of Bigfoot. Yeah. And I uh, I got the Spence sent me my preview copy yesterday after he re-edited some stuff and it sounds good. Everything's on track. Everything sounds good. Real easy. It's really easy to do. All you got to do is go to the uh, instructions. Well, there's instructions on the track. Yep. I've got uh, instructions there's links. On there. There's links to uh, where you need to go, and uh, just uh, follow the directions at the beginning. And it's real easy to do, and it's pretty good stuff. So go ahead and go have some fun with Bigfoot and Ivan Marks. Yes, and then be uh, be on the lookout because very soon. We're going to have our second commentary track coming your way, which we recorded just the other night. Yeah. It's in the can. It's got to get uh, edited and brushed up and made pretty for YouTubes. Oh, yeah. And we've already started in the works of our third one. Yeah. I uh, Let's see. I'm trying to remember which one the third one. Oh, okay. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, I remember. I know. We can go I ahead. Do we want to reveal we it? We can go ahead and reveal it. So, the se- so you've got Ivan Marks, The Legend of Bigfoot. That's number one. Your second one is going to be... You've heard about it on this show. It's going to be Gargoyles. Yeah. MAGA. MAGA. Now, the third one, the third one is going to be kind of a social experiment of Chief and I going into madness. You're going to hear us do commentary on the time machine I found at a yard sale. Yeah, and neither one of us have watched the whole thing through its completion. We've we've only seen it reviewed by other people, so we don't even really know ourselves what we're getting into. We've kind of brushed through it to see if it was good for the commentary, but that's as far as as that's as far as we went. It's gonna be fun. I, I, I honestly, it's probably just gonna be you and I yelling for about eighty four minutes. Do something! Yeah, it looks <laughs> it looks really bad. Uh, and well, then we have that Alice in Murderland, not the one that we watched before. This is a different Alice in Murderland. Yeah, which still mind-boggling that they've got two movies of the same exact title. But uh, this new one is a bunch of uh, Americans trying to do British accents and trying to do a twisted version of the actual Alice in Wonderland story. So it looks uh, endlessly entertaining. Yes. <laughs> Very low-budget Alice in Wonderland movie. A lot of people, you know, they love to do the commentary tracks of either, like, cult movies or or big blockbusters. I kind of like doing these off-the-wall weird movies or maybe some good 80s, like, B-action films. Uh, we, we ought to do the uh, – what we ought to do next, one, one of the things we ought to do is uh, the 80s teen movies. Oh. Like your Fast Times at Ridgemont High. Breakfast uh, Club. You know. Breakfast Club. We'll even get into like some of the like the really dirty, like the old dirty ones. Like we could do like Zapped with Scott Bayo. <laughs> yes, anything with Scott Bayo is golden. Scott Bayo and Willie Ames, by the way, the Charles and Charge gruesome twosome are in that one. You know Scott Bayo, he's a he's a MAGA. Oh yeah, yeah, he is. He's a he big time MAGA. He also just murder with Dick Van Dyke. <laughs> he's big time MAGA. <laughs> he's Chachi, the Chach. <laughs> Chachi wants to. Chachi loves making America great again. Yeah, Chachi's out making America great again. One, uh, you know, I cannot believe with all the Hollywood scandal that Chachi hasn't been caught up in it because he's been around some 
like some of the young starlets from way back. Oh, the, the, you mean the Harvey Weinstein thing that's been going yeah, on? Yeah, yeah, oh, the yeah. Big Hollywood, the burning of Hollywood that's happening right now. There's like three more came forward like in the last day or so. Oh, there and there's all there's all sorts getting wrapped up in it. I mean, this you and even Kevin Spacey this morning I read is wrapped up in this now. Kevin uh, Spacey on the good side or the bad side? Uh, the bad side. Oh, not Kevin Spacey. I like Kevin Spacey. Uh, that turns out, turns out allegedly, Kevin Spacey uh, uh, tried to get it on with a 14 year old boy back in the 80s. Uh, so uh, getting into this, uh, the uh, the weirder end of it as well. My God, I mean, it's like everything's coming out of the woodwork of Hollywood, and I liked Kevin Spacey. I mean, he's a great actor. Yeah, I, well, I mean, the, they, they're saying Ben Affleck, uh, Matt Damon, like tons of them are involved in this, and it's like. I, I don't even know what to think. I, I, not being a part of it and not knowing the truth, I mean, what what am I supposed to think? I, I can't – I'm not judging anybody until somebody goes to court. That's yeah. the way I am. I, somebody's got to, uh, you know, go to court and uh, sort of, – until well, then, I'm not going to condemn – I'm not going to go around condemning people online and jumping on the bandwagon until somebody is taken to court over something. Well, I mean, we know that – I mean, I mean, Bill Cosby, everybody thought he was just a wholesome guy, and then comes out he's, you know – well, I mean, well it, well, it also depends. Too. I mean, I will say this. When the evidence is so corroborated by so many people, it's it's hard to believe something didn't go down. But, uh, you know, I, I still believe in due process in the court system. So, uh, uh, you know, if somebody did something illegal, then uh, if they did it, then fuck them. Let them go to prison. But, I mean, I'm not going to start uh, being judge, jury, and executioner on everybody from comments online. That's That's my stance on it. Didn't um didn't Kevin Smith say he's gonna give like all his uh, royalty checks or like all the movies he did with the Weinstein Company he's gonna give them all away? Uh, that's I haven't heard him say that, but I think I heard him say that he's gonna get because he seems like the kind of person that would do that. I mean, because he because the Weinstein Company was what helped basically fund all his first movies. I mean, Clerks and Mallrats and all that. Yeah, here's the thing. Then that tells me if he's <laughs> actually gonna do that. If that's the case. That puts a red flag up on Kevin Smith that he knew some shit was going down and just went along with it and didn't say anything. And now he's now that everything's exposed, he's feeling guilty. Because if it were me, and I truly knew nothing about it, I wouldn't give my fucking hard-earned money away, the movies that I made. I'd say, look, I had nothing to do with this asshole. I, this, he had nothing. I mean, he might have put some money uh, up on this movie, but he didn't have anything to do with making it. There's nothing wrong with my movie, and I'm not giving the money back. It was well-earned money. I don't know. I got, I don't think he, I think Kevin Smith said he didn't know what was going on, but he feels bad that he took money from someone who, uh, you know, that did this type of thing. Look, everybody, every single time they get their paycheck, takes money from a lecherous rich fucker uh, somewhere. Some <laughs> some rich asshole that thinks like thinks you're a piece of dirt under their heel pays your paycheck every two weeks. So why would you give your paycheck away? Because that guy's an asshole. I don't understand. Now, you know who you know who's safe in Hollywood? Um, Charlie Sheen. Or, Char- well, no, I don't know. <laughs> no, because Charlie Sheen will come out and tell you right. Come on, Charlie Sheen has no qualms. He'll come out and say, I fucked her. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean. But, That's because he's got tiger uh, blood. How he did it, that, that kind of depends. But I, mean, I don't know. I, uh. Uh, I think people in the internet age have gotten into this, uh, the jury of, of Twitter. It's got, <laughs> it's, we've gotten past the due process and the court system and, uh, everything. And now everybody's just judged by a blurb or a headline. So I refuse to do that because that's the dumb way to look at life. Uh, due process in the court. If anybody did anything illegal, then they should pay for it. But uh, I'm not a judge. I'm not a lawyer. I'm not a cop. Um, I wasn't present for any of these allegations. I don't know. I don't even know how half these people are that are making the accusations. So I find it hard. To, what am I going to add to this conversation online? I mean, I can't. I can't add anything to it. I don't know anything about it. I just know that the accusations are there, and some people are apologizing. Some people are denying them. I think Weinstein's totally denying everything. Uh, but. Uh, I wasn't there. I'm not. I wasn't there. Just like I can't go down to the courthouse during a rape trial or a or a burglary trial and just step up and say, "I think he's guilty. Let's put him in jail." <laughs> that's, that's not my place to do that. 
Uh, yeah, let's see right here. Kevin Smith uh, to donate dividends from Weinstein made movies to women. This was uh, about this was the 18th of October. Once again, we're catching up a little bit here, people, because we had we had horror fest going on, so we're playing catch up a little bit on some uh, some news. Yeah, this, well, this is still pretty hot button shit that's happening yeah. every day. I mean, you uh, got accusers coming out of different people all the time. You got and, and well, and we've said our piece. Uh, the reason I come down so hard at Roman Polanski is Roman Polanski uh, is known to have done what he did. Oh yeah, and, and there's also the other allegations that he did it to other the other young girls at the time. So I always say fuck Roman Polanski. There's a reason he's a fugitive from this country. And uh, one of the things that made me really sick is the Academy Awards giving that asshole a standing ovation, giving him a ca- giving a fugitive child molester child rapist and a standing ovation at the Academy Awards and handing that motherfucker a statue. That's disgraceful, Hollywood, um, just so you know. And uh, if all these other allegations of, uh, especially the the men in these positions, because every one of these guys just strikes me as the kind of guy to be like, I, I can't just come out and say, I'd say, uh, I think, in my mind, they're probably all guilty as shit. But I mean, uh, uh, let the court system handle it. Let the lawyers sort it out. Uh, if the women are all telling the truth, and some of the men even, uh, then uh, Godspeed. Hope they win. Hope they put some assholes in prison. Hope the whole, uh, hope the the whole um, uh, dominance, sexual dominance, power trip, and bullshit ends in Hollywood because that's bullshit. And uh, you know, I just I just hope for the best. I don't. I don't work in the Hollywood industry. We we actually the show. We do know some Hollywood people. Yeah. But uh, they. Uh, I don't uh, believe anybody that we know would be involved in any of this. Right. But, um, uh, it says it's uh, it's a slippery slope to get into what, yeah. what just two guys on a podcast. Because yeah. what the fuck do we know about it? Uh, it says Smith's filmmaking career kicked off in 1994 with Clerks under Miramax, where he also made Chase and Amy, Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back, and Jersey Girl. <laughs> Then, under the Weinstein Company label, Smith made Clerks 2 and Zack and Miri make a porno. Bob and Harvey Weinstein were also behind the controversial Smith-directed Dogma, which Lionsgate wound up releasing as the controversial Catholic-themed film could not go through the Disney-owned Miramax pipeline. Smith has said in recent interviews that he was approached by Weinstein in recent months to make a Dogma 2. Smith immediately turned down the offer. No, I mean, yeah. Uh, I don't think he'd get that cast back for one thing. Well, Carlin's dead. Yeah, sadly. And I, I don't think that. Uh, well, I don't. Chris Rock might do it. He what's he doing? Uh, but, uh, uh, he's going to give the dividends from the Weinstein movies to uh, the nonprofit Women in Film, uh, which advocates for the advances and careers of women working in the screen industry uh, to achieve. Parody and transform culture. And now, Chief and I, we we are all for women in, in film and women producers. We've had, I mean, heck, half the women, half the directors and producers we've had on this show have been female. And I would say probably the awesome majority stuff. of the majority overall of our guests on the show of the entire four year run have been women. Yeah, we had that one episode with uh, Jessica Cameron and Heather, and he- and, uh, Heather Dorff talking about women in, in Hollywood and how they're treated and everything. Now, we're all for equality and in in, in, in all of that. Nobody should be treated unfairly. Nobody should be treated like bullshit, you know, especially in Hollywood where you're supposed to be, uh, you know, Hollywood, you think, you know, I did theater for years, okay, in high school. And, and, and Hollywood is, you know, the big stage. It's where you're supposed to go and have fun. You're supposed to, uh, to have fun create characters that people are going to watch they're going to love they're going to want to see more of to hear this bullshit going behind the scenes and it's old hollywood mentality and that old hollywood mentality is bullshit i mean i mean we we talked before yeah go back and look at a movie back in the old days the old black and white movie from hollywood the misogyny is right there on the screen i mean it's right there on the screen and um i mean now yeah I love old Errol Flynn movies. I love old Bogart films, you know, things like that. But I love the films. You know, what goes on behind the scenes does, you know, it, it's it, it needs to stop what's going on behind the scenes because it taints the film. It really taints the film when you when you when you hear about what may have gone on behind the scenes. And it's an it's an awesome thing when I like, I'll I'll say this, 
one of my favorite movies, um, and I watch it every Easter, is The Ten Commandments with Charlton Heston. Cecil B. DeMille. Love that film. Great special effects. Yul Brenner is amazing in it. And But even that film comes under fire today because of the way it was casted. You know, there are so many things that are being nitpicked in Hollywood today. Well, but here's the thing is, I'm wrong. not going to... I won't jump back to the past that far because you got to understand at a certain point in, in this country and, and around the world, the the attitudes and the way people conduct themselves evolve over time. So, yeah. I mean, you got to understand back in those days when they made movies like that, that was just the law of the land as far as, I mean, it wasn't right, doesn't make it right, but that's just the way things things were everywhere. And as time has progressed, there have been uh, people have fought and gain uh, rights to not put up with that shit, mm-hmm. and uh, and so I mean you can't I what I, I could go back to the Roman orgies and say well we need to fucking uh, we can't change the past the past is the past the past is what it is, and I don't think that uh, it necessarily taints those old movies because that was just the attitude of the entire planet at the time, mm-hmm. and over time and it's it's just like the things now. Uh, people still doing this now? Yeah, that's a problem. It's a huge problem. But I mean, w- what can we do? We can't go back and change the past, and I don't think that uh, I don't think we should. I think the past is something you learn from. Just like we were talking with Cool Beer, I don't think you need. I don't think you have to tear shit down and and rewrite your past. I think that's how you learn. When you get rid of your past, then you're doomed to repeat it. And uh, uh, that's the, Orwell's 1984 says that specifically how uh, monuments were destroyed and the past was rewritten. Uh, it's a dangerous, slippery slope when we get into shit like that. I don't know why people have, I don't know why people got to live in the past. Live right now. Fix what's wrong right now. Yeah, totally agree. Totally agree. And like I said, we are, you know, we support all the women in film. I, I want that to be put out there right, you know, at the forefront. It's time for some straight. Well, yeah, I mean, well, I think this show is uh, really. If you go back and look at our list, what's happening? There was a uh, an ad or something was playing on this site, and I don't want it to come into the, you know, the the feed there. All right, um, go ahead. But uh, uh, I lost track of the. uh, We 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 respect women in film. Well, oh, I was saying. like I said, go back and look at our guest list and our episode list. And uh, we've we've had Jessica Cameron and uh, and uh, Fleming. Heather Thorpe was on. Jane Fleming. The Salka uh, Gigi, sisters. Gigi comes on uh, a couple times. Felissa Rose. We're this this show is more female centric than it is male centric. Really, Pretty we've much. had more female guests on here. Uh, even Jennifer Kent. Uh, going back to the Babadook. Uh, oh yeah, great film. We uh we've I think we've we've had more that we've definitely had more female guests than male guests I think definitely and yeah. uh, and when we when she's available we we actually have a female member of the show that uh, is just very busy cooking food for people in New York <laughs> uh, she's like very busy Panda is like super super busy she's uh she's a woman on the move doing her career and uh another way we support her is that. Uh, uh, she can. She's free to pop in and out of the show as she wants. She's working on her career right now, so she hasn't been on the show. Uh, when things slow down, I'm sure she'll come back. It, yeah. She's got. Uh, uh, there's. She, the panda's given all the leeway in the world to do whatever she wants and then come back to the show. So I mean, I think we've always been supportive of of women in in every aspect of media and film. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, all of our favorite shows. So we like to toot our own horn here at the Nerd Rage Runner. Oh, we definitely clean. do. Our slate is clean, motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> this house is clean. Go carry in. Go into the light. Don't go into the light. Well, even on the old show, we had uh, there were more women on the old show than men. We had we had uh, Jules, we had Uni, Megan, Panda, and uh, then there was just me, you, and Pedro with with the four of them. Yeah. <laughs> so, We've always been. I, I don't know. Maybe it's just that we're maybe we're more comfortable doing maybe. the show with women. I don't I, know. I just sit here and I drink my delicious RC cola. I got Kool Aid. Mm. I'm a Kool Aid junkie, man. And my dog. I got a story. My dog. I came home after my dog Otto, the youngest, who is the biggest. He's like 120, 30 pounds. Uh, he he's just gotten to the point where I can leave him out free out of his crate when I leave, and I thought, oh well. 
It'll be fine. He he ate my Kool Aid. Oh, <laughs> and man. oh, I was madder than hell. I had, came home and I found my Kool Aid squeeze in the middle of the carpet. Carpet is stained completely red. The dog is stained completely red. And I had to go buy a new Kool Aid, and I was quite upset. Yeah, I've got that good poor people soda right here. As they said on the Cleveland show, that RC Cola. That's good poor people soda. It, the pizza place I worked for had RC exclusively for a while. And that's that's what I drank every day. For I had free access to the fountain, and I would just fill up <laughs> a giant cup of RC. Oh, man. Uh, so other news that have happened over the last couple of weeks while we've been in the realm of horror in that deep, dark dimension. Um, the Nerd Rage Renegades have gotten on iHeartRadio. Yes. But we I wonder how many people are listening to us over there. I'm not sure. The guy it... wrote us in uh, Filling the Void and said that we were doing all right. Yeah, hey, if you're listening to us on iHeartRadio, welcome. How are you doing? How you doing? Um, we, yeah, we got to thank the people. Hey, over there. office. Yeah. <laughs> office people that are listening to us. Yes. Now, listening next, to us, say fuck. Next stop, if, do people still listen to Pandora? Can we get on Pandora? <laughs> I don't know. I want to get on Yahoo somehow. <laughs> Yahoo Podcast. So, uh, but, <laughs> yeah, big, <laughs> big thanks to Philly. <laughs> uh, let me tell you something. I remember Yahoo Chat, okay? That my shit space. was. Think of MySpace shit. page for our show. MySpace page. Is Tom, will, will Tom still be our number one friend? The graveyard of internet. Yeah. Uh, but we do got to thank the, the, the head of uh, Filling the Void Podcast Network for putting us uh, putting us in for uh, iHeartRadio and getting us on there. Another platform you can listen to us uh, on. I mean, we're just we're everywhere. You you can't yeah. get rid of us. We're everywhere. I think we're on everything now. I think we're on every major one. All uh, except for Podcast One because they want at least thirty thousand fucking downloads an episode. We're not there yet. We will get there. Spread the Hurry word, up, people. people. Yeah. Somebody go download 30,000 of our episodes. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's got to be one episode, 30,000 downloads for one episode. So just go and keep clicking. <laughs> go get that, uh, hey, we got a good start on the AVGN show, so go start working on that. Yeah, go do that one. Um, but, no, a lot of good stuff has been coming out. So the last couple of weeks, um, so I've gotten a couple of video games over the last couple of weeks. Uh, I got South Park, The Fractured But Whole. And uh, I am at the end of the game. I haven't beaten it yet. I, I want to savor the ending of that game, so I haven't beaten it yet. Because it's kind of like I bought the game for like 60 bucks. Do I want to beat it in a week? No, I want to kind of like hold on to it for a little bit. So I got Fractured But Whole. Lived up to expectations. Makes me laugh. Um, I think Stick of Truth had a, some had a few more um, like what the fuck moments. Like actually having to like fight underpants gnomes on the bed while your dad's fucking your mom and a quick time event is you got to avoid your dad's balls from hitting you um not really any of that in uh fractured butthole um there is a part with an old uh lovecraftian god chief hey excellent Should well they did the whole cthulhu thing on south park this is a sha niggeroth and uh uh-huh. It, it's okay. This part's racist, okay? But it's South Park in the game. So the cops in South Park have been rounding up all people of color in the town to feed to this old god because this god cannot eat white meat. <laughs> so the way you beat the god is you have to hit the cops into this little circ, uh, this little boxed off area at the right time, and the ancient god will eat the white cops and lose life and throw up. <laughs> <clears throat> so um but you get all sorts of uh it's just like kind of like you know you get more characters to play with you get more summons to play with like you get uh you get um uh hyped up on cat piss gerald and his summon as he comes in like he's in uh, the the movie heavy metal and then it's just him flying around naked he's just walking around naked <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, Moses is uh, your healing summon, and it goes. You summon Moses with macaroni pictures, and it goes. Meanwhile, at the Hall of Super Friends, <laughs> um, and there's a part where you have to help Sea Man to uh, get uh, the gay fish's mom to heaven, and it's like Flappy Bird. It's like you're playing Flappy Bird to get the gay fish's mom to heaven. <laughs> well. So there's some fun. There, there's a lot of. It's fun like all games. mini games like that, the whole game. No, 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 no. That's just a few of them. The most of the game is is uh, exploration and beating the fuck out of like sixth graders and homeless people and mm. crooked cops and shit like that. 
Did I uh, did I tell you that I uh, I ruined? I just I was going to tell the story on the show the next time we did it, but I I have already ruined Stranger Things season two for myself. Yes. <laughs> now, this is how, how dumb I am. You have to explain to me because it's on Netflix, but you had DVR up, so you got to explain that to me. Because the uh, my Comcast cable has added Netflix to the app section on my DVR. Oh, okay. So That's what I wasn't I think, tracking. Yeah, I could get Netflix through my DVR now, so. I've got I can get it through Xbox or or my Amazon Fire Stick or I can just get it through the DVR now. So uh, what I did was I didn't even know it was coming out. I didn't know it was the 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 release date was was coming up and I was wasn't paying much attention to it. And I was kind of I kind of as we've talked about here before I kind of avoid a lot of press about stuff because they add spoilers and shit and I don't really want to I don't really want to know. I like to watch stuff organically myself and not have somebody else's opinion all over it before I see it. So I try to avoid all the, the hype and everything. So I didn't even realize that Stranger Things was coming out. And then I, I happened to see on Facebook or something that it was that it was released to Netflix. So I went, and uh, that was the night that, that me and Jess got home late. And uh, we were going to do the show, and I was getting home too late. Yeah. And uh, so I came, when I got home, and I finally made dinner. It was, it was getting pretty late. But I went, and I said, hey, do you want to watch Stranger Things and see what it's about? And she's like, yeah, let's, let's check it out. So I put it on, because uh, we watched the first, I really liked the first season. So I, I put it on the, the second one, and I'm, I said, well, hold on, let me check the menu and see how many episodes this is, and see how many, you know, how long it's going to take to get through it. Because I, want, I wanted to see how many, how many, maybe I could watch two or three of them that night, and, and I wanted to see how many there were. So I go there, and I check, there's nine episodes, and there's some extra, like, behind-the-scenes stuff, and then, like, an after show. And I'm just saying, oh, okay, nine episodes, so. I go. I scroll back to the top of the list to to episode one, and I swear I hit play on episode one. I don't know what happened if there was a malfunction in my DVR, but it jumped back down to episode eight and started playing episode eight. So I'm thinking this is episode one, <laughs> and the, the the opening of the show starts and everything's in chaos. There's and Sean Astin is in it for some reason, and Paul Reiser's in it for some reason. And there's a little girl in it that I'd never seen before. And there's all these different <laughs> characters that weren't in the first season. And they're, like, in a hospital room. And everything is blowing up. And there's, like, creatures crawling out of the ground. This is this could, this might be a little bit of a spoiler for anybody listening. So if you uh, if you haven't seen Stranger Things Season 2 yet, uh, just uh, fast forward, like, the next 30 seconds and then come back. But uh, I'll start starting now. Stop. Okay, so anyway, there's like creatures crawling out of the ground. They're coming out and they're they're infiltrating this uh, facility and they're all over the place and they're trying to find a way to escape. And, and it's just chaos. Everything's blowing up. So I tell my wife, like, "Wow, this is a this is a pretty this is the way you start a season, man. This is some pretty wild shit. What's going on here?" I was like, uh, "I was like, man, they didn't. I was like, if if they hadn't, if I hadn't seen the first season, I really wouldn't know what the hell was going on. I wouldn't know who anybody was, and uh, and what's happening, and and so." Like th- these, this real exciting sequence of escape and and fighting the monsters and everything, and it leads up and it gets uh, the the girl comes back from wherever she was, and then there's a a reunion with everybody, and then they defeat the monster. And it's like like I'm trying to keep it as little detailed as possible yeah. in case somebody hasn't seen. But uh, real exciting, uh, two episodes in a row. I'm like, wow. And now now that if that's the way they're going to start out, now we're going to get the story. The next seven episodes are going to be like. This is explaining where this guy came from, and there's still another danger we got to deal with. And I thought it was going to be, I was like, wow, this season must be really packed full of awesome shit if that's how they started out. No, I I watched episodes eight and nine <laughs> in a row, saw the end of it, and then uh, I get to the end of episode nine, and, and then uh, the the Stranger Things after show starts, and it's like this guy comes on and he's like. If you're like me, you just watched nine hours of Stranger Things. And I was like, wait, hold on. No, I just watched two hours of Stranger Things. What the hell's going on? And so I go back, find out that I started at episode eight. And uh, so then I'm, of course, I'm I'm, I'm pissed off because now I just ruined the entire season for myself. And uh, I'm thinking, well, uh, then, it, then it dawned on me. I still knew what was going on, and I still knew what was happening just – from knowing the characters from last season. So then I thought, well, maybe this show isn't so great because I just cut seven hours out of this motherfucker and I still know everything that's going on. So I, I skipped over seven hours didn't even need to, and I didn't even need to see it. 
Because within the last two episodes, you kind of figure out who those people are and why they're there. Yeah. So, uh, really, if you've seen the first season, this is a, a thing for everybody. If you've seen the first season, you can literally watch episodes eight and nine and get the rest of the whole show. You don't even need to watch the season. You See, can just watch that, and you'll know what's going on. And i got to finish the first season. So I have this issue. I have this issue where I want to watch something. It's coming out on Netflix. I'm excited for it. But then I see everybody on the line just hyping it up to where, oh, my God, this is the greatest thing. Oh, I'm changing my Twitter banner to with the Stranger Things font, and everybody had it, and every nerd podcast changed their font to the Stranger Things font. And everybody's like, oh, my God, it is the greatest thing in the world. And that's when I say, well, if everybody else is saying it's the greatest thing in the world, it's probably a pile of crap, and I don't need to watch it. And, and it's it's not that it is a pile of crap. And 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 it, like it's the only buddy's opinion I really really take to heart is yours, because I I is you put it to me straight. But every like like with Deadpool, you were like, no, dude, don't fall on the hype train with Deadpool, and watch Deadpool. And Deadpool was fantastic. It was amazing. But everything else, whenever anybody it gets something gets this bit, it was like um like Daredevil. I watched all the season one of Daredevil, and then Jessica Jones comes out, and everybody was like, "Oh my God, Jessica Jones is the greatest Marvel Netflix show there is," and it took me six months to get through Jessica Jones because I'm like, "Fuck the hype train." Definitely not the best one, but I liked it a lot. I've liked all the Marvel series. I liked Iron Fist, the hated Iron Fist. I liked it. I thought I it was Iron good. Fist. And especially and, uh, when you, now that you know that Defenders was basically just a continuation of Iron Fist. Yeah, it was mostly surrounded Danny Rand and Iron Fist. Yeah. Um, the thing with me is, well, Rick and Morty is the same. I love Rick and Morty. Oh, but yeah. I absolutely hate the fucking fan base for Rick and Morty. <laughs> yeah. But that's, that's, that, I think this could help you. This could be something that could help you with, to separate the hype from the actual art. Um, I think it's perfectly acceptable to like a, a a franchise and hate the fan base of that franchise. Much like I still love The Walking Dead with all my heart and soul, but I hate 99% of The Walking Dead fans. Fandom, yeah. I can't stand them. And, because they're the ones that overhype the shit. They're the ones that get tattoos of the shit like the day after it drops because they gotta be such a hardcore fan. I gotta get that tattoo of Daryl on my back. Yeah, I got full Norman Reedus face life size on my back. No, uh, but it's the fans of this shit that ruin it for you. So what you got to do is tune out the fan base and just take the art. For, and, and like I do, avoid every bit of hype. Don't read those articles on Facebook from Newsarama. Don't read Bleeding Cool. Don't read I any of read, I wouldn't read Bleeding Cool even if you had a gun. Well, I don't, either. I don't even follow Bleeding Cool. But for I'd anybody else. before I'd read that shit. Anybody else out there who reads Bleeding Comic Cool? Comicbook.com, things like that. Any of that shit, avoid it like the way. Because the way I see it, uh, uh, you know, we're not, you know, the top media guys, but this is a fairly successful podcast. We are media. I will make my own decision. I don't need some other asshole telling me what yeah. to think. So that's why I avoid everything. I especially avoid Talking Dead with Chris Hardwick, because one thing, I hate that prick. I avoid everything uh, with Chris Hardwick. Yeah, and it could even commercials. He comes on those stupid Google commercials. Click, you're oh, off. Yeah. You're done. Who are um, you? Who uh, made you king of the nerds? Nobody. Who? Me. Uh, not real nerds. Uh, yeah. But uh, the uh, I avoid every bit of, the, of media and hype. I watch the product itself, and I make up my own mind. And I avoid all the comment sections. I avoid all the the stupidity. Of of I, what one thing I'm really starting to get sick of is the speculation about Star Wars. What's gonna happen? Who's raised parents? And it's like I don't give. I'll watch the movie when it comes out because that's the product that the studio wants me to see. Here's what I I'm hate. not trying to sneak around and get information that's not supposed to be available. Here's what I hate about the new Star Wars. Why in the last two films, okay, did they have to put? a character or creature in it that's the ooh I need a plushie of that character so honestly it's still plushies, that's why <laughs> I mean honestly to, in my personal opinion BB-8 served no purpose BB-8 was like watered down R2-D2 that's all it was he it, was R2-D2's bastardized watered down version and now we get the fucking 
Porgs? <laughs> well, I mean, old, even the old Star Wars had the Ewoks. The, they all got to have their goofy little creatures. But, I mean, as long as they're not, like, interfering with my enjoyment of the Jedi uh, lore aspect of Star Wars, uh, they don't bother me too much. Yeah, but, yeah, they are silly. They got to put something in there for for the little kids, though. Because, I, I mean, just, a lot of little kids got attracted to Star Wars through the Ewoks and Return of the Jedi. I just wanted, I wanted R2-D2 to zap BB-8 when the, when R2 woke up, I wanted him to zap BB-8 with his late, with his freaking electricity little tongs. Because BB-8, <laughs> I mean, what did BB-8 serve? Oh, here's these plants. You go to a desert planet, find somebody. That's what R2 did. And you regulated R2 to this, in, to, to be in, in like a coma or deactivated the whole movie because you wanted to get BB-8 over. Fucking soccer ball. You wanted a goddamn soccer ball to take R2-D2's place. Now, I liked Force Awakens. I did. But I could not stand R2, or BB-8. I, R2, R2 has proven himself in combat. R2 has been in the fray. You know, he's a <laughs> he hard... He fly, apparently, now. <laughs> he's a hardened little fucking droid. But fucking BB-8? I kick him, kick him through a field goal for Real Madrid. I mean, come on. <laughs> and now these porks. And you had to make sure in the trailer that you showed this, like, Chewie's, Chewie, if Chewie growls, I'm like, ooh, Chewie growled. But then I got to get that little penguin creature. <laughs> no, fuck you, porg. And then all the Funko Pops have fucking porgs in their hand. It's like Chewbacca holding a porg and Ray holding a porg. And it's like, fuck you, porg. I don't need a fucking porg. They're like porg. the tribbles of Star Wars. Um, what the, the, you saw that picture of that, one of my favorite pictures is that some, that fan art of the stormtrooper with the decapitated porg with the spine hanging out. Yeah. <laughs> Look at the, it's a great painting of a stormtrooper, like hyper realistic painting of a stormtrooper holding a decapitated porg in one hand and a big knife in the other and he's just covered in blood. <laughs> I mean, I mean, you have a porg, but I still can't get something of porkins. Come on, Porkins was the shit. He may have died really quickly. I thought, they, a, I thought they, had a, uh, they got a figure of him. Yeah, but I want like a Funko Pop of Porkins. <laughs> you know. I've seen shirts with Porkins, though. Porkins is the man. Or what about Dax? What about Dax? And Dax gets very little love. Why'd they put that guy from Heroes in Star Wars? <laughs> you know, the one guy that played the cop in Heroes? Yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know. I never even... You know what? There's another show I didn't really watch. I, I didn't watch... Everybody was like, Heroes is so good, and I never finished Heroes. I watched, like, the first two episodes. My dad liked it when he was around. But, I never uh, I never finished Lost, because I thought Lost was just a pile of shit. Um, I watched, like, the first season of Lost and got bored with it. I hate Grey's Anatomy. Grey's Anatomy is a pile of shit to me. I hate Grey's Anatomy. Well, my, pro, my, my criteria now is it's got to be a horror movie... Some kind of action movie. It's got to have a superhero in it, ghost, something, uh, kung fu. It's got to have something exciting in it. I would literally claw my eyes and ears out if somebody made me watch The Notebook or some bullshit like that. I can't stand dramatic movies. I like, hate that shit. Like, I'm bored two minutes in, and I'm just bored for two hours. Like Okay, so like I started watching the Kojak movies, and I love it. I love Telly Savalas. He is so suave. He's that guy. Hardened lieutenant that all the other cops say the guy's guilty and Kojak is like, no, he ain't guilty and I'll prove he's not guilty. Who loves you, baby? You know, that's what I've been watching lately. Cole Shack, Kojak, Co uh, Columbo, all the Coles, all the Coles from freaking the seventies and eighties. I just watched that Columbo movie where the the rich guy was like a he was like some kind of a magazine owner uh -huh. and his wife was gonna sell the magazine. And he killed her, and he walled her up in the wall. Yeah. And, uh, and Kojak, or uh, Columbo had to come in, and he, he noticed that there was an empty hanger in the closet, so then he figured out the whole crime from an empty hanger. Like I said, Col Columbo, I've said it before on the show, Columbo knows within five minutes of being on screen who the killer is. The rest of the episode is him annoying the fuck out of him to make him confess. Well, that one was a weird one, because they, they, they made Columbo look really bad a couple of times in it, like he didn't know what he was talking about. Oh, and that was one front. where... That's just a front. He, it, it was like he didn't totally figure it out till the very end until he saw the closet with the missing fur coat. It's, and then he, like, knew that the body was in the wall. And then he took the guy's uh, phone and called the... Called the, the Back when they had pagers. Yeah. The, the body still had a pager on it. So he called in the house and he followed the beeps till he found the wall. 
Well, it's like I watched one. It was a so there was a, a psychiatrist, and he wanted to run away with this young woman, so he killed his wife and made it look like um, somebody had broken into their apartment and murdered her. And then he had the girl dress up as his wife to get on a plane because they were going to go to like uh, Mexico or something. And he's then they staged an argument on the plane. And she got off the plane to make it look like the wife went home. And Columbo kept antagonizing the psychiatrist. And basically it was like kind of like Columbo was using reverse psychology on the psychiatrist until the psychiatrist confessed. And then at the end of the, at the, end of the episode, Columbo did the same thing that the psychiatrist did. He planted an actress to act like his young girlfriend was dead. And the young girlfriend was alive listening to the confession and everything. It was great. It was great. Great movies. One of uh, one of my favorite shows that I watch uh, almost on a daily basis when I have the time. TJ Hooker. And I us- this is what I usually leave on for my dogs, too, in the morning when i got to go. Uh, uh, have Gun Will Travel. With uh, Richard Boone, I think, is the title guy. He plays mm-hmm. Paladin. But uh, I watch Have Gun Will Travel because Paladin is uh, he's kind of like the Frank Castle of the Old West. He's a gun for hire, but uh, he wears like an all-black cowboy outfit. Uh, he's kind of fat. He's got a big mustache and a giant nose. He's a real ugly dude, but he was like like the leading man. of the Back when you could be like a real ugly dude and be the leading man of a show. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and he's just a badass. He just goes from town to town telling people off and shooting at them. He's got a derringer in his belt, so if they disarm him, he just pulls out his little gun and shoots people. And, uh, yeah, it's great. That and uh, I like. I'm starting to like uh, the old old Maverick with um, with uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, shit, what's his name? Uh, Maverick, uh, Maverick. Uh, who else? Uh, He's also uh, Rockford Files. James Garner, the old uh, yeah, the old right. Maverick with James, yeah, yeah, yeah. James Garner. Because because uh, Mel those Gibson, are pretty good. Mel Gibson was in the movie of Maverick. <laughs> he hates Jews. He does. I don't know if he does. That's probably a libel statement. <laughs> allegedly, we're gonna allegedly, get, we're going to get Mel Gibson. Gibson in his underwear showing up here. You, <laughs> you, you. Roger Moore was also in Maverick. That was a. Uh, that's a good show. Like, uh, like my my cable channels, uh, my me my me TV, my Heroes and Icons, my. Uh, uh, Justice TV, I think it is. Cozy TV, whatever they call it. And uh, what's the other one I watch? Uh, maybe just those three. It's Me TV, My TV, uh, Justice slash Cozy TV, and Heroes and Icons are like the four channels on my cable, like in the 1100 section of my cable. And all they show is shows like that. That's all there is. It's just. Gilligan's Island and and, and uh, the Adams Family and the Munsters and and uh, Kojak and Columbo and Kolshak and just every show that, that from the seventies and the sixties through the up to the nineties they play like everything and it's like man I love it <laughs> that's, that's all I ever watch my TV never leaves those channels. It's like I can't stand – like I can't watch TV shows most of the time, These like like newer shows. They just don't have the same appeal. So like Marvel shows I'll watch. I love the Marvel shows um, unless they get like uh, – like, like I'm going to give Runaways a shot. But if Runaways is too teen angsty – I mean. It's gonna turn me off. I mean, they, 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 they now they changed how Nico in in Runaways cha- summons the staff of one from the comic books. So in the comic books, the way Nico um, summons the staff of one is through self harm. That allows her to summon the staff of one. But in the show, they said that's not going to be the how she summons it because she they don't want young girls to watch the show and then start self harming. Um. So that's different. There is going to be there. You uh, old lace the, the 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 dinosaur that has the mind meld with Gert is a puppet. It's like a live puppet. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, how's that going to go? It, it's kind of the same way. Like I can't watch CW shows. Everybody's always like, oh, the Flash is coming on, or oh, it's time for Arrow. 
I'm sitting there going, I really like the Flash first two seasons, but man, after they when they got into starting doing the Rogues, it just got so over the top ridiculous. It started to become almost like Adam West Batman in a way, and it's like that's yeah. not what that that doesn't fly now. And then they took Captain Cold and Heat Wave and made them what heroes and Legends of Tomorrow. Yeah, well, I mean, well, the Rogues in Flash comics kind of go back and forth too. Yeah. I mean, I could see that happening. The 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 Rogues have have helped Flash battle Grodd before. They've they've uh, He's kind of got, he's kind of got a relationship with the rogues now where he kind of leaves them well enough alone to do their own thing. And like, unless they're really fucking doing something dangerous to a lot of people, he doesn't intervene with the rogues because they've helped him out. So many, which is kind of a shitty way to be. <laughs> he's yeah. like, I'm letting these villains get a pass, but. Yeah. But I mean, he's kind of like that. I mean, Barry Allen's got a, he's got a rapport with Captain Cold and, and the rogues that he doesn't have with the other villains and they, they, they will help him out in major emergencies to save people or whatever. So they're kind of more anti-hero. Yeah. Just kind of, those just, shows, they're just kind of thieves. I hate how those shows, it's it's very brooding. It's teen angsty. It's like, I don't want Oliver Queen to be teen angsty. I want, I want freaking funny making quips Oliver Queen, you know? I want my... Well, you got to think the first couple seasons of that, too. He was a brutal murderer. Yeah. <laughs> He was just I, shooting people right through the chest with arrows and killing I them. I want him and Green Air, Green Lantern to show up and find Speedy shooting heroin. You know, that's what I want. Um, now, I'm I'm interested in the Constantine animated series that's coming out. Cause I it saw, looks like they used the same animation from Justice League Dark from what it looks like. It, I can't... Looks, it looks like that Matt Ryan is, is coming back to voice Constantine. I mean, it's bloody as hell. I think he's coming back to Arrow as well and going to do some some spots as Constantine in the regular Arrow series. I think it's going to be Legends of Tomorrow, I think. Which I like Matt Ryan. That's the the only like the one DC show I like is the one that didn't make it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it started it started started out really strong and then I started worrying it was going to turn into that X-Files Monster of the Week thing kind of what they were doing with it. They weren't they were starting to introduce things like the Spectre and and uh they were introducing a few things, and the uh, Doctor Fate, I'm sure, was coming eventually because the Doctor Fate helmet was in the house. It was the, yeah. well, they, they they used a different thing, but it was kind of like the House of Mystery where he was. I at. mean, you know, at some point, Swamp Thing could have shown up, and then we could have had a really good Constantine Swamp Thing interaction. Yeah, I mean, and then they could have uh, dragged out the old Swamp Thing guy from the old series and yeah. had him do a cameo, and, like they did with uh, the old Flash on the new Flash series. But yeah, and they could have done so much stuff with it, but they put it on NBC. Which on the only which on NBC the only thing NBC banks on is ooh people are watching the Big Bang Theory we're making money. You only got to see Constance. You only got to see him smoke like at the end of the episode too. Like Constantine chain smokes, so it's like Constantine he, he, is a he's a he's a take no nonsense surly bisexual chain smoker. That's what he is. You still got me? Hmm. Yes, I'm just I'm checking my I got a I got a uh, battery notice so I'm I'm watching it. <laughs> ah, making sure your I'm phone don't die. Eye. Yeah, well we're in we're in 48 minutes so if it goes at this point we've almost got an hour in so. <laughs> yeah, but uh, no, I mean there like I said, there's some TV shows like like the one that I don't I like I heard a lot of people bitching about but I absolutely loved uh, is this new one on Netflix called Big Mouth. Uh, I saw I saw it on there, but I haven't watched it. Yet. Oh God, I, I laughed it. my ass off. I was laughing my ass off. So Big Mouth is a show uh, about kids going through. It's cartoon. It's an adult cartoon about kids going through puberty. Okay. And what's funny about it is the kids like okay. So the boy is going through puberty. You have the pu. They have the puberty monster, and he's this this big hairy demon looking monster that's all about getting kids to like masturbate and fuck and do debauchery and at the same time when women come into their puberty they have a puberty monster who's female and each episode it's something like uh, you know getting a you know getting a boner during class or first periods or something like that but it's done in a humorous way on the show with the puberty monster and the kids seek advice from the ghost of duke ellington and and there's one episode where Duke's having a party, and it's the ghost. They get the advice from the ghost of Duke Ellington, the ghost of Prince, the ghost of Elizabeth Taylor, 
the ghost of Picasso. And and one episode, uh, a kid thinks he's gay and he does a duet with the ghost of Freddie Mercury. <laughs> I mean, it's who it's, better? Who better to coach you in that? Yeah, but it's hilarious. Freddy. It's hilarious. But everybody was saying it's not right. You know, we should have a show like this. I'm like. Okay, if Family Guy can have a five-minute episode of, you know, puking, or that one scene where um, they Peter forgot to get Meg um, uh, tampons, and he opens up the front door of the house, and it's and it oh, and, and he gets blasted with blood that comes all out of the house, and Meg's just like, "I told you, I needed my tampons," or maybe it was South Park that did that. I don't. It was either Family Guy or South Park that did that. But I was just dying laughing at Big Mouth. I was dying. I was I'd sit there watching it, and I'm and then there's a whole episode where a kid, he's ha, he ha, he shows how he has sex with his pillow, because he's at that age and he's humping his pillow. But the pillow is sentient, and and the pillow gets pregnant. And I I messaged you about this, and I'm like, how the hell does a pillow get pregnant? <laughs> Yeah, I didn't know what you were talking about. <laughs> so the pillow gets pregnant. Occasionally, Spin writes me things in Messenger that I've got no clue what he's even talking about, and I'm just like, oh, okay. <laughs> and the pillow gives birth, but it turns out the the baby pillow looked like the guy's the kid's brother. So the kid's brother had sex with his pillow and got the pillow impregnated, and it just makes no sense. And I'm just laughing the whole time, like, how does this happen? And then then you find out the pillow was voiced by Kristen Bell from uh, Veronica Mars. Yeah. Well, lately it seems like um, uh, younger people have a real problem uh, understanding you can turn a knob on. And I always thought this was a, an old people problem, uh, but no, apparently it's younger people nowadays. Uh, you can change channels. Uh, you can choose not to hit play on something like that on Netflix. Uh, there's loads of choice. You're not being silenced or oppressed by someone else's art. You don't have to watch it. <laughs> You don't have to listen to it. You don't. Have, you don't have to listen to the show about it. You don't have to listen to anything. That you can. As a matter of fact, I recommend to everybody that at least one day a week you turn off all your shit and go out in the sun and look at the sky. Oh no, the sun <laughs> hurts. The, 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 the sun hurts the beast's eyes, chief. I I am a I am old school, I guess, because I find it really easy to live without electronics. Like I. I love. I, don't get me wrong. I love my phone, and I love having access where I can watch TV on my phone. That's great. I do it all the time. If I'm sitting in a car waiting somewhere, or I'm in a doctor's office in the waiting room, I've got my headphones. I can sit and watch episodes of whatever right on my phone, right from my DVR. I can watch anything on my DVR on my phone, and uh, I love that stuff. But I, many times during the week, put my phone. Like I'll tell you, I'll say, I'm putting my phone on the charger and I'm going outside. Yep. And I'll just put my phone, I'll disappear for like two or three hours and I'll go outside and reconnect with outside and people and nature. And nature spirits. And, and my dogs. And I have, I have a good time doing that. I keep a healthy balance of online and real life. Well, and I think like, more people need to do that because everybody's afraid of each other now. <laughs> I go, like, I'll go out, I go shopping with the family, I go to restaurants. Um, I'll sit down, I'll turn off things, I'll sit down with a good book and I'll read. You know, yeah. I'll enjoy things. Got to do other things besides sit and just be mad at the yeah. internet all day. Yeah, you, you, and, and well, some people that's their whole life is being mad at the internet. You know, I guess what a life that is. I feel, I feel sorry. I don't, I don't hate those people. I feel sorry for them. I feel very bad. It's for like them. you could have like one person like is like you'll see a, like like you could see like a post. Um, today I'm at my sister's wedding. I love it so much. She looks so beautiful. And then the next post, which five minutes later. Mind you, the vows are probably still being done. Uh, but five minutes later, it's, uh, oh, look what Trump did. He's such an asshole. He's such a motherfucker. You know, and it's like, aren't you at a wedding with your your sister's turn wedding? Your, turn your turn your shit off. About and Trump? Sh <laughs> Have some tact out it, in public. Yes. I'm yes. But you know, it's good to be back on a regularly scheduled format. We got a lot coming up here in the next couple of weeks. Uh, getting ready for Turkey Day, and then Christmas time's coming up. We'll have a lot going on. Um, uh, but let's go ahead and hit that spoiler alert, Chief, and let's talk about some comics. Oh, yeah. We got the good comics this week. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. The Renegades are about to spoil this week's DC Comics. So this week, of course, another great, great week of DC, and of course, another metal tie-in. 
Um, yeah. Real interesting, because some people I talked to this past weekend said they didn't like metal. I think metal has been fantastic so far. Yeah, I don't understand that. I mean, I think it's the best thing they've done in a long time. So this week we get um, we get Marvel the Devastator. And, Marvel? Uh, uh, not Marvel. <laughs> Batman the Devastator. Sorry, I've had Marvel. <laughs> Marvel, Marvel the Devastator would be Marvel perfect. the Devastator. Uh, we get uh, the Dark Knight's uh, Batman the Devastator. Now, this is the uh, Superman equivalent uh, Batman out of the Dark Knight's. Yeah, and once again, what I didn't expect at all. It's, they're all it's different. Totally it's, up. it's all different. It's all interesting. So this one... Uh, so you have Bruce. So you have Bruce, and we, well, we can expect that it's Bruce talking, and he's talking about Superman. Um, claim, you know, talking about how Superman was supposed to stand for the truth, the justice, you know, a better world. Uh, yeah, well, in his universe, Superman had turned evil for some reason. Superman had become be, began annihilating uh, heroes and stuff, and the yeah, and it's kind of, it's, it's kind of weird because he he mentions in there that it kind of all stemmed from the fact that. Um, all the rest of the heroes said that in a fair fight, Batman would beat Superman, and it kind of drove him insane that people kept saying that Batman could beat him in a fair fight. Yeah, I don't. That, in a fair fight, no way. <laughs> just, just fisticuffs, Superman wins. And he even uh, says that in the yeah, book. He skewed a uh, uh, unfair fight for Batman to win. And even and Superman even says that in the book, he's like, with one look, I can sever you in half. With one breath, I can freeze your heart. With one move, I could break every bone in your body. Yeah. So, and, uh, well, I don't even understand that, that concept because, I mean, we know from from Superman's past that he has to he, – he's even admitted his frustration in the past of, of how he has to walk on eggshells in the human world. And how he can never truly do what he can do, and uh, I think it was in Justice League Unlimited, uh, an episode of that where he fought Darkseid. Yeah, and he said, "I might have hold back." Of, I can't remember if it was that or if it was in one of the movies. But it was he unlimited. Darkseid. It was Justice League Unlimited. He was like, "I always have to hold back. I don't have to hold yeah, back." Yeah, like I, with you, I don't have to. And then he just went fucking balls out on Darkseid yeah. and just plowed him into the ground. But uh, so Bruce of that dark multiverse, that dark uh, universe, had to resort to. Uh, something drastic. He he has the the doomsday strain. Yeah. Which and, is an infective, infectious disease, really, that can affect people. And it actually, from what it looked like to me, it kills normal people. Kills them and transforms them. One of the yeah. Um, but he transforms. They start himself. growing those bony plates, but then they die. It's yeah. Like weird. But he was able to harness it, and he becomes a doomsday and kills his universe's uh, um, Superman. And then the the Joker, the Batman who laughs, shows up, and he, I love that he goes the the uh, bat the 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 Devastator looks at him and goes Joker. I thought Superman killed you. So it's all it kind of had like a little bit of a injustice vibe in that universe. In a well, way. the Batman who laughs one shot is coming out next, from what I yes. saw at the end of this. So we get to finally see what that's about. But the the Batman who laughs says, "No, I'm a, I'm Bruce Wayne," and uh, he he t tells him he's not the Joker at that point. So that I I'm really that's that's the one, and they're holding it back the longest. That's the one I'm most interested in reading. So, the the Bruce Wayne, and I guess he's able to transform back into Bruce Wayne. He's able to go back and forth between the Devastator and the, his Bruce Wayne because he goes to the Daily Planet to find Lois. Yeah. And infects Lois, and in in the regular timeline. Like in he, the regular he, timeline, he, yeah. yeah. When he comes to the regular Earth, and he even tells her, he says, "Your infection will take longer because you've been ex you've been so long exposed to Superman's you know radiation, but you will turn. But it'll just take you longer to turn. So you'll get to you get to watch everybody else turn before you do." And then she locks. Yeah. Uh, then she locks uh, Jonathan in a in a safe room. Yeah, they've uh, apparently built a indestructible safe room in their apartment that even Superman can't get into. Uh, but uh, that's where she, she locks Jonathan Kent in there, and then she's beginning to transform outside. And 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 Supergirl, Superwoman, and Guardian have already started turning because they took the fight to the Devastator and they got infected. And then uh, the Devastator, he takes the Anti-Monitor's 
tower and flies up into space with it. Yeah, they it's like uh, they need it for some kind of conduit to to our world or whatever to for the thing that's got the real Superman tied to it. That's like the antenna for whatever they're doing. But uh, I thought it was really good, totally unexpected. Like I I was I I, I don't know why I keep after the, there's only been a couple that they've merged. So I, I keep expecting a merger between like Doomsday and Batman, but it's not it's not the case. Like all these all of these Dark Knights have turned into their their forms of Bruce Wayne in really different, interesting ways that I wasn't expecting. And which is good, because, I mean, if all of them merged with somebody else, it would get boring. It's like, okay, we already know. So yeah. Well, so the Barry it, Allen one, I thought that kind of set the precedent for what was going to happen, but then it didn't. It just it got different. Each each situation was completely different. And like you said, the, the Batman Who Laughs is the one I think everybody wants to see, because he's been in every single one-shot. He's, like he, he's like the leader of the Dark Knights. What's his story? And I think that's the one everybody's just dying to see. And that, and it, I hope, like all of these, it lives up to the hype. Well, I was thinking that this is more like, um, this this is like a Justice League horror story. It's Scott Snyder's known for writing horror books, and this is almost like a horror story uh, told with superheroes. And it just at this moment in it, it seems really hopeless for what's what's all happening. Oh, yeah. Like it's, everything is just devastating. Well, you like, got you got su- you got the- you got Superman tied to that thing when he went to the multiverse to try to find Bruce. You've got yeah. the other members of the Justice League are now in their own personal bat caves of of death and torment, as we yeah, saw. Yeah, and well, and our, uh, Bruce Wayne is with Superman on that machine, I believe, and he right next to him. Um, we should find out what's going on with him because they had that one shot coming out called Batman: The Lost, so we should yeah. figure that out. Um, you have the other heroes like Doctor Fate and everything trying to get nth metal and and find things. Um, it's it's a pretty wide encompassing event. Uh, not as many heroes in it as like Crisis because Crisis had every single everybody. person in it back from the Golden Age. But I mean, this is touching on a little bit of stuff from Crisis with the with the Monitor Towers, and um, there are quite a bit of, of heroes you weren't expecting. Like Doctor Fate is, is coming in pretty heavy in this. Yeah, and uh, uh, the, the Council of Immortals with uh, you got Vandal Savage and the the, the uh, Phantom Stranger, Phantom Stranger, and and all the Immortals from DC's world are all in the Hall of Doom. And um, uh, you got the Plastic Man Egg. Plastic, I think Elongated Man is somewhere in there too. I can't remember for sure, but I thought he was in there, but I could uh, be wrong. And then we know that Hawkman is going to have a part in it towards the end. Well, it's all based on uh, on Carter Hall's writings in his diary, so it's all based on that. And then Sandman. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, Dream the Endless is in it too. Yeah. So you got all that. Now, once again, we ask, how is this going to tie into Doomsday Clock? Because Jeff John said everything's connected. Well, I, Tom King, I believe, said uh, or the, the Tom King tweet I saw that he said, yeah, Doomsday Clock, uh, metal, everything's connected. So yeah. we'll we'll see. We shall that's see. That's coming up this next month, so we got to get everybody get ready to get your doomsday clock on because that's coming up this next month. Yeah. All right, Chief. What else did you read this weekend? Uh, I read Batman and Superman and uh, Batman White Knight. Batman White Knight is pretty good. Uh, getting into uh, number two this this time. Uh, Joker. Um, apparently, the Joker is cured, and even behind closed doors, we didn't know that there there's two Harley Quinns. Apparently. Hmm. Uh. uh Jack Napier, as they're calling him from the Batman movie, is they're calling the Joker Jack Napier. He uh he apparently uh, Batman force fed him a bunch of uh, mental pills <laughs> in the first episode, and it seemed to shock him out of the Joker persona. So he's taken off. He's not he's not uh, stained white like he is normally. He's he's wearing makeup in this version, and uh, so he took the makeup off. He's become a normal guy, and now he's fighting. Uh, saying that that Batman and the GCPD are the reason that he's the Joker. He said they've got a crooked deal with Arkham and said that crime is money and that the real estate market centers on crime and they call them bat zones. When Batman goes into a poor neighborhood and fights, it's declared a bat zone and all the property value drops and then all the rich people invest in it and build it up and make a lot of money. So now they got Batman's head screwed up thinking that he's the cause for everything. And uh, the Joker has said that Arkham made him the Joker. He went in, he said he went in a petty criminal and came out the Joker. 
and he's blaming it on the GCPD and and Arkham, and said that all that everything that's led up to the their city of villains is because of GCPD has been importing villains like this and creating villains. So now he has become kind of a political figure that's going around trying to discredit Batman, saying that Batman is the reason why there's all these criminals. But uh, he's actually also recruiting villains. Uh, like, he's he's become a more sane version of himself, but he's trying to discredit Batman, so he's getting in league with, like, the Penguin and the Mad Hatter and uh, Clayface and a bunch of guys that are going to try to bring Batman down. Hmm. But uh, it's pretty interesting, because we find out in this one, he goes to meet Harley Quinn, and it's this it's the Harley Quinn in, like, the short skirt, like, cheerleader outfit Harley Quinn, the, the modern Harley Quinn now. Right. Uh, he gets with her, and she's just nuts. And she says, put the makeup back on, and let's go rob something. And he's like, no, really, I'm really straightened out. I don't want to do that anymore. And then all of a sudden, another Harley Quinn shows up, the one in the the red and black jester outfit shows up and and uh, kicks the other Harley Quinn down and said, there's two Harley Quinns. Hmm. And she said, at some, when you, she said, when you became too abusive, I replaced myself with her and you didn't even notice. And, uh, he's like, well, how could, how could you have just replaced somebody that I was so close to? And she said, because you're a megalomaniac and you just didn't notice. You're, you're too obsessed with Batman to have even noticed I totally changed people <laughs> on you. So the real Harley Quinn shows up and takes him. And now they've, uh, Harley Quinn has decided to take her costume off too. And now they're just, Harleen Quinzel and Jack Napier and their political figures trying to destroy Batman. And uh, it's pretty interesting. Uh, I also read Batman 34, I think it is, with the uh, Batman and Catwoman are going to meet Talia al Ghul. Uh, he's going to tell her they're getting married and that they want nothing more to do with her or whatever. And uh, so there's a big Batman-Talia al Ghul fight. And then next issue, keep an eye out, we're finally going to get uh, Catwoman Talia al Ghul showdown with swords. Nice. And that's going to be badass. Uh, Superman is uh, Superman is uh, on Apocalypse, uh, was kind of kidnapped. Uh, Lois, Jonathan Kent, and Superman were uh, transported to Apocalypse uh, because Luthor is there. Luthor is... Uh, wearing the Superman emblem in his armor, the the new kind of nicer, kinder Luthor, has showed up on Apocalypse, and they, they he has told them that he is the savior that they've been waiting for, and he goes through their lore about who the savior is. You find out the savior is is Superman. Uh, that's that's the reason Darkseid's been trying to. That's why the Darkseid's so hell bent on killing Superman all the time, mm. is because in apocalypse lore superman is the prophecy that will rid the world of dark side and make the world a better place and uh Lu- they they thought it was luthor at first so they all worship luthor well luthor told him well i'm not that guy but i do work through him and he opened up a portal and superman just popped into the world hmm. and uh and was there and he he's like luthor what do you what have you got me into and he tries to explain to him but you find out it says that the savior of apocalypse He's going to come, he's going to be a human, he'll walk through the ashes of Apocalypse when Darkseid is dead, and he's the son, he's the orphan son of farmers. And so, uh, they're obviously talking about Kal-El, right. uh, prophecy, but Luthor capitalized on that and kind of took over Apocalypse, because uh, Apocalypse mostly think Darkseid is dead and there's just chaos going on. Darkseid, as we know, is a is a baby uh, possibly teenager at this point. <laughs> yeah. Uh, has, he's been reborn and he's growing up. So uh, Batman used him to open the, the gate to the, the dark multiverse. But uh, we know Darkseid is around, but uh, he's not an apocalypse, and apocalypse is just in chaos. Uh, Lois Lane also becomes one of the female Furies with Granny Goodness because she uh, she's captured by Granny Goodness, but then they're attacked by a giant dredge worm on apocalypse, and Lois picks up the gun and and helps fight off the dredge worm. So Granny Goodness gives her armor and says she has the heart of a female fury and makes Lois Lane a female fury. So uh, that's pretty interesting. So uh, that's all. I think that's all I've read this week so far. Batman, um, uh, Batman, White Knight, or, and uh, uh, Superman and Devastator. So that's your comics for this week. Make sure you head out to your local shop on Wednesday today or, or whenever Wednesday is. 
and uh, pick up the books. Go support your local comics. Still, still some ones I want to read. Green Lantern. Uh, Green Lanterns I want to read. Uh, uh, we I got them uh, Friday. I read one of them Friday. Didn't have much time the last couple of days, but I'm trying to catch up. So I've got a few more I want to read. But uh, those were the best. I picked the best. Batman, Superman, Batman, White Knight, and uh, Batman, uh, Dark Knight's tie-in. Good so stuff. That, yep. So that'll do it for us this week. And I do want to know, I went to Disney Store while we were talking. And if you go to characters, yes, char- if you go to characters, right, search uh, f- search merchandise for characters. There's Moana, there's Stitch, there's Belle. Then there's fucking Porgs. Porgs has their own fucking character section on Disney Shop. What the fuck? <laughs> You're going to like them. When you see it, you're going to say, oh, God damn it, they're adorable. No, I'm going to say, kill the poor, kill the poor, kill the poor. My wife. Kill them right now. I suppose they got to have something in there that, that appeals to everybody, I guess. But, I mean, as long as they're not overbearing in the story, I'll deal with it. Like the Ewok. I hate the fucking Ewoks. But the Jedi's awesome. The final showdown with Vader and Luke is one of the best scenes in the whole trilogy. Yeah, but why do I want a Porg silk tie? Well, don't buy it. You don't need it. I'm gonna, I don't need Some to buy it. Some asshole's going to buy it, that, but you won't. I don't need to buy it. I'm just looking. I'm looking at stuff. I like stuff. I'm looking at stuff. All right. There stuff. So, I'm going to look at kitchen and dining, too. So, uh, we want to thank you all for joining us once again. Back to our regularly scheduled programs. Of course, you can catch us every place and every time. Where, Crystal? The Nerd Rage Renegades are on the air every Wednesday on... Podbeam, Stitcher, Player FM, iTunes, Google Play, and every Thursday on GamingRebellion.com, filling the Void Podcast Network, and now iHeartRadio. Once again, big thanks to Filling the Void for putting us on iHeartRadio. Big, big win for us. That's a big win. iHeartRadio, people. Make sure you go to YouTube.com. Check out the commentary track for Legend of Bigfoot. And Gargoyle's coming up. Gargoyle's coming up, and stay tuned for the time machine I found at a yard sale. <laughs> uh, well, for what, we're going to do that next weekend, because I'm going to watch it once first before yeah, we get through it, so I kind of have an idea what's we going on. We should do on. Birdemic at some point. We should do Birdemic. Birdemic is so bad. <laughs> have too many people done it? Let's do a poll. We'll do a poll on the Twitter. You put a poll on the Nerd Rage Twitter and right. see if anybody is sick to death of Birdemic or not. Because so many people have done it. We'll we'll find out. All right. So you can follow Chief of Space Chief 75. You can follow me at the Nerd Rage Renegades official Twitter. Of course, Facebook.com backslash NRR Truth Radio over there on the Facebook page. Look for us on Instagram, Nerd Rage Renegades on the Instagram page. And uh, until next time, Chief, let's go find us a time machine at a yard sale. <laughs> let's go. Good night, everybody. Good night. Nerd Rage Relegates.